everyone what's up welcome to inner tribal styles my name is Larissa so this is actually one of my first videos that I posted in a very long time I think I have like three other videos on here that I posted like I want to say about four years ago which is a very long time but I'm gonna start posting regularly on here I'm gonna post a lot of things about beadwork and sewing and things like that so if you are interested please don't forget to hit that subscribe button this video is more for beginner beaders so if you are just starting out beading and you want to learn how to bead um what i'm going to be talking about specifically is items that you will need in order to bead native american beaded earrings like the ones i'm wearing so these are considered like applique type earrings they're a little bit more modern they have the gem and the bright colors and the rhinestone banding so that is what i am going to be sharing like things that you need and where you can get it um, i remember when i first started beading i didn't know where to get a lot of this stuff and i was really confused and i got things that i didn't need or that weren't really high quality so i figured i would help those of you who are out there who want to learn how to bead and are not knowing really where to get certain things so let's just get right into it the first thing that you will need are obviously beads so i highly recommend starting out with um, size 11 seed beads you can either get it on a hank or you can buy in tubes both are really affordable um and i actually recommend buying your beads um, at some sort of like specific bead store. I don't recommend getting your beads at Walmart or Michaels because those aren't really high quality and they fade and I don't know, I just don't recommend that. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I got my beads from Walmart and Michaels when I first started and they just weren't high quality. Um, but I do recommend getting your beads like either at, um, I like to shop at a store called Northland Visions. It's based out of Minneapolis, but you can um, buy your beads online. They, sh they ship pretty quick. And then also Beaded Edge Supply is another place. Um, and I'm not affiliated with either of those places. I just absolutely love them. They have, you know, good service, really high quality beads, a different, like a ton of variety of different types of beads, different sizes, different colors. And yeah, highly, highly recommend those two. And I will link um, their websites down below. And again, not affiliated with them. I'm not sponsored by them, you know, with my 90 subscribers or whatever. <laughs> um, I just highly recommend them. And then another tip I have for beads is if you're not really sure like what kind of like projects you wanna do starting out, I would just recommend getting like um, a bunch of different colors, but make sure that you are getting a bunch of white and a bunch of black. And the reason for that is usually because you use a lot of white and black, like white and black are the main colors that I use a lot. Um, so I highly suggest getting, you know, for sure white and black and then like one of each color. And the second thing that you will need when beading is thread. So when it comes to thread, you can get like a huge spool like this or you can get like the little mini spools. Um, I like to just to get a big big spool, you can get white or black. I suggest starting out with size D. Size D is a pretty good size, like it can fit through the needles, it's high quality, it doesn't break at all, um, it doesn't fray, highly recommend. Um, there are other sizes, I think if you go down in letters, um, the thread is thinner. Like I think at one point, I think I got size A and I did not like it. It was so, it like frayed really easy. It was so thin, like I could literally pull it and it would break. But with size D, like I can pull it and it's not breaking. Really good quality. Um, and I don't really know, like, so this brand is Coats, but I would just recommend again, getting your thread from Beaded Edge Supply or Northland Visions because um, they have these spools and they also have the little spools and they have like different sizes too. Um, and the next thing that you will need are needles. So um, there's two main, main kinds of needles. There's pony needles, which is what I have, and then there's the John needles. Um, you know, both are good quality. 
you know, I don't really recommend one or the other. I think I just use whatever I have on hand. But make sure that um, your needle size matches your bead size. So if you're beading with size 11 beads, make sure that your needles are size 11. Um, and another thing with needles is that they come in longs and they also come in shorts. And if you're new to beading, I would recommend getting both because um, some people prefer to bead with short needles, some people prefer to bead with long needles. I like to bead with long needles, um, but I know like other people like to bead with short needles. So just get both and see you know, what you like and what works best for you. Oh yeah, and before I forget, you can also get need these needles from North Envisions or Beaded Edge Supply as well. So the next thing that you'll need is fabric stabilizer. So um, in terms of fabric stabilizer, you, I think it's called Pellin. You can get this from Walmart. You can also get it from Joann Fabrics. And I think if you actually search up like fabric stabilizer in, on Amazon, you can get it on there as well, like in sheets. But if you go to um, um, excuse me, if you go to Walmart or Joann's, you can actually buy it by the yard. I would recommend going to Walmart because it's cheaper at Walmart. Um, but I do recommend getting this in person because what you want to do is feel the thickness because there's different types of fabric stabilizer at Walmart. There's like ones that are like super super thin and flimsy. Um, this is like pretty thick and I just like to kind of feel um, for myself like what it feels like before I buy it because I remember one time I actually bought fabric stabilizer online and I didn't know the difference between like thickness or whatever so I got some super thin ones and my glue leaked through it was super flimsy it just wasn't I didn't use that so highly recommend getting it in person um, but again you can get it by the yard it's super cheap it's like a dollar a yard or something like that so highly recommend getting fabric stabilizer and I actually seen on TikTok I forgot who the person was but um she said that she likes to bead on like high quality thick photo paper um and the photo paper obviously if you're getting high quality thick photo paper it will stay so that's actually you know a good like base that you can use for your beadwork as well I've actually never done it um, I do plan on trying it though just to kind of see what it's about, but so that's another option too. So the next thing that you will need is some sort of backing for your earrings. So for these earrings, they have the glitter vinyl earrings, which is what I have here. So this, um, I tried finding it on Joann's. Um, I haven't looked in the past few years though because I have a bunch. Um, but you can get sheets of this from Hobby Lobby for like $1.50 and they have a ton of different colors so I recommend getting it from Hobby Lobby because um, the, sheets, the sheets again are super affordable and it's just really pretty it adds like a nice little you know it's pretty or you can obviously use leather I think this is um, buckskin leather I usually get my leather at Tandy Leather um, I usually just go in person to get it um, but yeah, either or, I just prefer this just because it's easier to bead through, it doesn't take as long, my needles don't break, so yeah, highly recommend getting the glitter vinyl sheets from Hobby Lobby. So the next thing that you will need is some sort of glue, and I highly, highly recommend getting the Epoxy E6000 glue. So I know a lot of people don't like the smell of this, but I actually got this one, um, I don't know if you can read that, but it's the no odor and this actually works just as fine it doesn't stink which i love because the other epoxy glue does stink um you can also get like the mini tubes of it and then there's also um e6000 glue for like just beaded jewelry um i did have some but i couldn't find it and that works just as fine um, you can get this from Walmart, you can get it from Joann Fabrics, I'm sure you could probably get it on Amazon. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend this. And if you are just starting out beading, I do not recommend getting super glue. I don't re recommend getting the tacky glue or anything like that because it just does not stick. And your gems will end up falling off or like the super glue sometimes burns like the back of the gem and it will fade like the color of it. So do not recommend 
like using super glue and then again with the tacky glue it just does not stick so don't recommend using that the next thing that you will need for this style of earring is some sort of rhinestone banding so this is what the rhinestone banding looks like um i would recommend getting it's called ss8 which is basically the size that's the most basic size it's a really good size um yeah not much to say about that but um so this is actually hard to find because you cannot find it in walmart or joanne fabrics or michaels or none of that um but you can find it on etsy so all you have to do is just type in rhinestone banding ss8 and there are a ton of awesome shops on etsy that will sell you rhinestone banding you can get it by the yard you can get it by the card some people sell sets like this set right here so it's a bunch of different colors you can get like one of each color and typically rhinestone banding like everyone prices it different i know when i first started it was really expensive it was like four dollars a yard but really you can get the same high quality rhinestone banding for like two to three dollars a yard and yeah it's super pretty it adds extra bling on your earrings um and another place where you can get rhinestone banding is online auctions on facebook and i do plan on doing a whole video about online facebook auctions i do not own my own auction site or anything but it's a place where you can auction off your own beadwork and it's a place where you can buy beading supplies or also buy like beadwork from other artists at like a really high discounted price like i used to i mean i still do once in a while but i used to auction off supplies and um some people like can win auctions for like a dollar um i remember one time i got this pair of earrings they're so pretty I won them for five dollars and yeah it was kind of a steal I kind of felt guilty but um yeah so I will actually post my favorite auction site down below it's called powwow bling auctions again I am not affiliated with that with powwow bling at all she has her own little business um but you know she's a very reliable seller her name is Brandy um, I highly recommend buying from her too. She has a ton of beading supplies. And again, I'm gonna do a whole video on like how to buy stuff on Facebook in a safe way, you know, um, how to post an auction, how to, you know, how to just like buy from an auction in general, and, you know, things like that. So keep a lookout for that video if you are interested in learning more about auctions and buying from sellers on Facebook or Instagram too. All right, and the next thing that you'll need are some hooks. So, I don't know if you can see those, but they're just basically fish hooks. Not, not fish hooks, but like, that's what I like to call them. They're basically earring hooks. I get these from Joann's. You can get them from Walmart, and you can get them from Michael's. Um, pretty basic, nothing too special about these. Um, and I also recommend getting some sort of backs to go with them. Um, some of them come with backs, some of them don't, but I recommend getting some backs. And when you do get the backs, make sure you get the um, little plastic ones. So there are metal ones and then there's the plastic ones. I like the plastic ones because they don't fall off, but like with the metal ones, I don't know, I just don't like them. I mean, obviously you can get what you prefer, but I recommend getting the little plastic ones or like, they're like wax type ones. I wish I had some to show you, but I don't. Another thing that you will need for beading earrings is these fingernail posts. So you can get regular posts, which I do not have, but I will show you what they look like on an earring. So I actually got, oh, here's a back. So I actually bought these earrings from a powwow, but um, this is what a regular post looks like. I actually don't like these posts. For these kinds of earrings because they're super heavy and these earrings always fall off of me i love these earrings though i think they are so pretty um but i highly recommend getting fingernail posts and um you can get fingernail posts again from etsy um there's a ton of sellers on there who sell fingernail posts um you can also get them from the auction sites and i know brandy the one i was telling you about who owns powwow bling she also sells these 
and I think that's where I get mine. Um, but yeah, highly recommend these. And I do have a video on here. It's like super, super old about how to apply it, but I wasn't talking, it was just music playing. So I, I'm definitely gonna be doing an updated video about how to apply fingernail posts because, you know, they are kind of tricky a little bit. Like, here's an example. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but. So I don't just glue, like some people just glue the fingernail post to the back of the earring. I don't like doing that because they'll fall off really easy. Um, so the way that I do it is like, I cut a slit so it's like sewed in and it's like, you know, it doesn't fall off and it's perfect. But some people don't like fingernail posts because they hurt their earring or their earrings. They hurt their ears. But yeah, I recommend getting them if you are, you know, wanting to be an earring, like, you know, this style earring or whatever. The next thing that you'll need is your gems or your mirror or your epoxy caps. So, um, here is some little acrylic mirrors. So you can get like the round acrylic mirrors from Michaels or Joanne Fabrics. Um, but they don't really have a ton of different like, I don't know, different shapes or anything like that. So again, I recommend checking out Etsy because you can get a ton of different like shapes and sizes and things like that. Um, like here are some oval ones and then I'm gonna dig and see if I can find my other ones. Um, but there's like turtle ones and like hearts and things like that. Like these are like, I don't know if you can see them, but they're like um, trapezoid type ones that are like angled. Here's some actual trapezoid ones too. Yeah, I can't find them right now. But a ton of different kinds that you can get on Etsy or on auctions too. And another thing about the auctions that I really love is there's a lot of talented people on there. So you can actually get like painted acrylic mirrors from auctions that people like hand paint themselves. And yeah, so highly recommend checking out the auctions. Um, and another thing that you will need are some sort of gems. So with the gems, again, highly, highly recommend checking out Etsy do not get your gems from Joanne Fabrics. And the reason why I say that is because their gems are not the same. They're not the same quality. Um, they're just not good. I remember when I first started beading, I got gems from Joanne Fabrics. And um, I also used super glue too. So it like, it burned the back of the gem. It just didn't look cute at all. Um, and they weren't the style I was looking for. So check out Etsy. All you have to just search up is, um, you can even search up Native American gems, you can search up gems, you can search up epoxy gems or, you know, whatever. And there are a ton, a ton of different sizes. Like you can get these little things. Um, like here's an example, and this is not my beadwork by the way. Um, here's an example, these little resin flowers. And then here's another example of gems. So just different kinds. There's like horse eye gems, there's teardrop gems, there's round gems, there's heart gems. So just, you know, search any of those on Etsy and you'll find some. And then obviously if you do decide to um, check out the auction sites, you can also find a bunch on there as well. Um, and the next thing that you can bead with are epoxy calves. So here are some epoxy calves. I actually made these myself. Um, let me see if I can find. Here's an example of an earring that's made with an epoxy cab. Um, and again, with epoxy calves, there's like a ton of different shapes. There's like trapezoid, heart, circle, horse eye, um, what else? Butterfly. Um, and again, search on Etsy. They have a ton of different kinds on there. Um, and then also on the auction sites as well, people um, make their own designs. So yeah, there's just a ton of amazing, amazing artists on these auction sites. So highly recommend checking them out. And another thing that you'll need is some sort of beading mat. So I recommend getting, um, a sticky bead mat 
And the reason why I recommend getting one of these is because your beads don't fall. Like, and they don't stick. There's no residue on the beads at all. It's easy to pick up your beads. But I have a little one. Like, she's older now. She's six. But when she was, like, a toddler, she was always grabbing at my bead mat. And my beads just didn't fall. So, highly recommend getting one of these. I think you can get these on Etsy. Um, but I actually get mine from um, from Brandy, which is who I told you about, who owns the auction site Powell Bling. Um, but I know for sure, I'm pretty sure you can get them on Etsy. You might be able to get them on Amazon. I will do a quick search for you and I'll post, I'll post it down below if I find any links for these because I highly recommend getting one of these. And then the last thing that you will need, or one of the last things that you will need, is just some sort of cardboard. So you can buy cardboard if you want. I just use recycled cardboard, so I don't even know what this is. This is like an oatmeal box or something. Um, but this is for the middle of your earring. So if you're gonna bead earrings like, you know, with the fingernail pulse, like obviously you want them to be stable. So I just use recycled cardboard. Again, if you want, you can buy cardboard from like Joe and Fabrics or something, but I just recommend, you know, recycling the cardboard um and then lastly of course you need some scissors and then a lighter and it doesn't matter what kind of scissors that you use um i just like to use the fiskers these are my favorite kind and i get you can get them from walmart or joanne fabrics um so yeah i think that is it with everything that you will need in order to be native american earrings um, hopefully that was helpful. I just remember when I first started beading, I didn't know where to get a lot of this stuff and I wish I had a video like this. So I'm hoping that was helpful. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll be happy to answer them. But keep a lookout for more videos. Again, I'll be posting about um, auctions. I'm also going to be posting about different kinds of beads and I will be doing like beading tutorials and things like that. Um, but thank you so much for watching and...